On a different camera, different studio, I have Kellyanne Conway, Donald Trump's campaign manager. Kellyanne, welcome to the program. Yeah, there you are. I'm, gl I'm so glad Hi, you could join us this morning. Um, you know, these, uh, this election has taken wild swings from one week to the next. This week it's taken a wild swing towards Donald Trump. But are you planning for what Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, I mean, they could release by the end of the week, a bombshell that hits your campaign? Have you got any plan for dealing with that? <laughs> Well, we're the Trump campaign, Stuart, so you see that we are equipped with war wounds. It's like the Edward Scissors hands of insults and slights and negative news stories every day. Um, I would note that my Democratic colleagues from across the aisle did not seem very seasoned in dealing with their crises this weekend. Um, but we're pretty seasoned over here. But look, we're not, we can't do anything about outside forces. We are very focused on Donald Trump's very disciplined, consistent message on creating 25 million jobs over the next 10 years, unleashing energy and, and infrastructure investments, and of course, repealing and replacing Obamacare. That's the issue of the day. That's been the issue mm -hmm. for the last six or seven years. Um, the Republicans, as Pat Cadell will tell you, Republicans won so many uh, seats in state legislatures, in the con Congress in Washington, the governorships. Why? In 2010 and 2014, based on Obamacare. They couldn't do it in 2012 with the same effect because they nominated the inspirational blueprint and the political cover through Romney and Romney Care. But that's a huge issue right now, and it's the one Donald Trump is talking about most predominantly out on the stump. What? Um, you've got, you know, we're on offense, and, and Pat Cadell is absolutely correct. These polls were closing last week, well before Friday's explosive announcement by Jim Comey. Um, we're, you know, we're going to, I said last week, we're going to win the race, and we're going to win the race. Well, I know a lot of independents, people who have, they're kind of in the middle, so to speak. Uh, a lot of them say, after this weekend revelations, they just can't vote for Hillary Clinton. That's but they're right. still not sure about voting for Donald Trump. What's your campaign saying, directed to those independents who you need? What are you saying to them? My message to those independent voters who are truly undecided is think about why you have a negative impression of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Think about how fundamentally different it is. Sometimes you don't like something Trump said or how he said it, but are you going to vote for somebody who lies for a living? Hillary Clinton is a serial and, and unapologetic, I would, to quote a word, irredeemable liar. And the Democrats own her. They never should have, never should have stepped aside and, and, and clear the field of Joe Biden or Mark Warner or Bernie Sanders, all these other people who could have run and wanted to run, Martin O'Reilly, Jim Webb. They cleared the field for her and they knew what they were getting. And now, with eight days to go, they own her and all the slop that comes with her. This is a woman who, from back when she was first lady, Travelgate, Filegate, the Rose Law Firm billing records, a federal investigation in Arkansas, all of a sudden the, the, the billing records show, they pop up in the White House one Friday afternoon. So, and then, and then of course, as she's, the whole reason we're having this conversation at all is because she set up this home-brewed private server that was against the law to begin with, put everybody, including the President of the United States and the rest of us, in a very bad spot, imperiled our national security, unfit, unqualified to be president, and a very risky choice. And my message to those independents are, you're an independent because you hate politics and politicians and the insider game in Washington. There's no self-respecting independent who can possibly vote for Hillary Clinton. It, will Donald Trump keep up his schedule of at least three rallies, appearances every single day? And where is he going to concentrate that effort? He is, and the, the reason that we can expand our map at this stage, Stuart, is because he is willing to go to two and three states a day, as is Governor Pence. And they're keeping this exhausting, punishing schedule, but they're taking their case right to the voters. We don't wait to get fair coverage. We just take the case right to the people. Um, and today he's in Michigan. Um, Governor Pence is in Florida. I mean, tomorrow it'll be Philadelphia, Wisconsin, back to the, back to the Rocky Mountain states. So you're going to see him in Florida, Ohio, Iowa, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Maine, Colorado, New Mexico, Michigan, Nevada. And uh, we're just very excited about the different paths to 270 that we have. Just a week ago, you, re you yeah, read all these remember. ridiculous stories about the narrow path, the end of the path, the end of the race. And now people are looking really silly putting that champagne back, right back on the shelves. <laughs> right back on the shelf. Okay. Kellyanne, you're very busy, but we're very glad you took time out to be with us today. We do appreciate it. It's Kelly. always a pleasure, Stuart. I'll see you victory night. Take care. Okay. <laughs>